<sighs> this, th- th- this is a manga, all right. Kedemono Tachi no Jikan, also known as A Time for Beast, is a very difficult manga to read. I tend to cover manga like this, bullying, SA, horror, psychological abuse, because a lot of the times the mangaka has like a sort of commentary on what's happening in Japanese culture during that time. And I always find it interesting to see what people from other walks of life have to say about the state of interpersonal relationships where they're from. If you can look at Kedamono Tachi like that, then yeah, you'll enjoy this manga. But if you get triggered by things like abduction, child abuse, rape, Stockholm Syndrome, hoarding, then you're really not gonna like this manga. Nor should you. It really isn't very good at all. Airi Hirakawa is a young model who is just starting off in her career. She's very attractive and she's starting to make headlines. One day, however, when she's coming from her regular visit to her local convenience store, she's jumped and abducted. Upon awakening, she finds herself chained up in a room completely filled with trash. I mean, all over the place. This is literally garbage mountain. The person who kidnapped her is Hirokazu Imai, a man who not only worked at the convenience store that she regularly visited, but a stalker who has been watching her for some time. He's been digging through her garbage, getting all of her used old clothing. It's really fucking weird. And to add to all of this insanity, he forces Ari to marry him, keeping her locked in this home, creating a new life for them. The endless days of rape, torture, and abuse start to get to Ari. Is it Ari? Or Ari. Ari, Ari, I don't really know nor care about her name. And it's hard for me to care about the things that happen to her either. Hiro and Ari are the only characters that you really get to know in this manga, and it's just strange. Every chapter feels like it's just trying to make you cringe even more and increase the shock value from the previous installments. I mean, I get it. There is something interesting about seeing a scenario like this develop. We don't always see this in modern stories, but we kind of understand that she would be abused all of the time. We understand that the main character is fucking weird. So why there's so much repetition is beyond me. It really just feels like the mangaka Big Brother just wants to shock readers. I don't know how I feel about that. I think if you are a good writer, you can tell an actual story and people can be shocked by the things that happen to characters that they care about. When the story is only focused around the abuse and the torture, then what are you really trying to tell? What are you really trying to do here? And there's nothing that actually saves this series. The writing is schlocky and not good. The art is very, very boring. Even the graphic sex and the shock value abuse, it grows old after like chapter four. But ultimately, this manga is hard to read, not because of how uncomfortable it makes you feel, but because of how shit it is. This is an edge fest and nothing more. The author does absolutely nothing original, and I at no point cared for any of these characters or even how it would all end. Any plot twist just made me kind of laugh because there was no way Big Brother and his editor thought this would make for a good plot point. This manga is just straight up trash. Is how I felt about this manga before the author completely flipped the script. The Time of Beast has a sudden tone shift that absolutely saves this manga and introduces a fresh and funny story that I didn't think Big Brother was capable of pulling off. Kedamono Tachi becomes a romance manga. Deranged as it is, everything that we've experienced so far is actually the setup for the ongoing story. Now, I don't know if this was intentional. I don't know if this was done because of lagging readership and they wanted to save the manga from cancellation, but I really do love this plot twist. When we catch up with Airi or Ari, I still really don't give a shit about her. She's blown up in Japanese model circles. She's married to another up and coming model star. And after picking up her career, selling a fabricated story of what happened to her during her disappearance, she's finally in control of her destiny. 
choosing to move on from the abuse that she's endured in the past, hoping to never have that shit affect her again. And with the help of medication, her, and the reader of course, explore their developing relationships in a post-abduction world. But I think the best part of this is that we get to see this hoe actually live life. Yeah, she has to deal with all of that past trauma on the daily, but I think that's what adds a little bit of mystery and excitement to this manga. And her husband, Yu, is also a really cool character. He isn't overly developed, but what he's contributing to the plot right now leaves the options open for him to actually develop into a very interesting character, which is a step that I think this manga needs to take because you can only live on a tone shift for so long, and now that it's a romance manga with psychological elements, how are you going to balance that out? How are you going to keep all of the fans that originally came for the gore and the abuse when every single chapter is told from the POV of two beautiful, well-adjusted models? Would I recommend this manga? Yes. I enjoyed the twist, and I'm a big fan of where it's at right now, but that first third was quite difficult to get through. The writing and art isn't enough to keep a casual fan of this genre, and the small cast means that the viewer is tied to these personalities that honestly aren't very dynamic. But I'm not gonna drop it. Mostly because I can't drop manga, it's a curse. But I think Big Brother is a talented author. You can see him slowly improve as this series progresses, and he's taking a lot of chances that you just don't see many modern mangaka usually take. This is the sort of artist that has a very good chance of breaking out later on down the road, and Ketamono Tachi will be looked at as the misunderstood, visionary, ahead of its time work that signaled the coming of a genius author. I'm giving it a 4 out of 10.